what's going on guys welcome to today's video we're heading to ronnie's shop or ronnie's shop ronnie's house uh we're gonna go grab the van because i gotta do some things today oh shit turkeys what up cousins all right i'll i'll see you at ronnie's house i gotta drive you know back roads good stuff I definitely didn't use starter fluid. It starts really good. All right, I got the old hog out here. Um, I have a lot of stuff that I have to put from my car into that. Both the bikes are in here. They fit great. They look great. Besides the dirt and my tire and my tire pressure, but. Be all good. Callie's bike seems to have a lot of oil on the exhaust. Now I'm gonna try to take care of that at some point. I don't want her following plugs. They could just be running a rich mixture because it was a race bike, but whatever. All right, I got my things. Peace out, my guys. We out here. I love this freaking van, guys. Guys, 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 guys. Fucking YouTube. Alright, well. Got the sweetnesses back there. Let's go to the shop and get some work done on these things. Okay, so. For these two bikes, you may notice a couple things that I got. But, basically, Callie's bike, like, her tires are mint, dude. This weekend, we go going riding. And, uh, I think she's really going to like the bike. At some point she's gonna order like the restyle plastics and maybe like some pro taper bars with the risers because you need to get the adapters anyway. Stuff like that. So you know, she'll uh, she'll be adding on to this bike very soon. It'll look pretty freaking sweet. As for mine, I'm gonna be doing a woods build. And what do I mean by a woods build? Well, it's a pretty common thing for people to do to motocross bikes. Uh, this obviously being a YZ250. Uh, you can tell by the man pipe down there, but this, you know, a lot of people use these as uh, enduro bikes, so they convert them because they can't afford a KTM, such as myself. I'm not going to friggin' buy a, you know, $10,000 bike, and a lot of people have this misconception that to make this bike into a formidable enduro bike will cost you nine grand or whatever, you know, it's... Oh, you'll, you're, the savings will be gone, blah, blah, blah. Listen, the only thing you're not going to have is electric start. So if you absolutely want, need electric start, if you're riding in like the gnarliest shit, yeah, sure, go get a KTM, go get a WR, whatever. Go get an actual enduro bike. If you don't mind kickstarting it, my bike starts first kick, so it's not, it's not a big deal. Yeah, I'm not, really, I'm not really hurt for a kickstarter, but things you might need for something like this, um, I'm going to be doing, let's see, I got a chain because my chain is fucked. I got a higher geared front sprocket, so my first gear can be a little bit longer. If you're on a smaller CC bike like a KX100, I would suggest gearing it down, which means going up in the back or down in the front to give you more like acceleration. You're basically making your gear shorter. Also, this is a six speed gearbox, and you'll probably be chilling in a second on uh, on like the hard, you know, rocks and all that stuff. You'll be, you could lug it in second, and then, uh, and the KXs do really well. Also, I need to do some levers, and I have another thing that's pretty damn essential coming tomorrow. I couldn't find this anywhere on, online if anyone's ever done it. Uh, apparently not, probably because uh, import bike guys hate KTMs for some reason. But I like the KTM silencers. I like how they're long, and I like how they're quiet. So this thing has a dent in it. It's messed up on from the top because the dude before me flipped it. That's why it touches this plastic right here um it, it's in pretty damn rough shape and i doubt it's ever in its entire lifetime been repacked and i will give you a good example of that right now So yeah, it's loud, it sounds bad, it pops, backfires are loud as shit. Um, so, I found this 300 XCWE, 
not that it really matters. I think they're all pretty much the same. Um, it is non-spark arrestor, uh, but it is a stock KTM exhaust, and it's a good bit longer than that exhaust, and a lot newer. So I'm going to see if I can make this fit and just use these mounts if I can. So I'm going to bring this back in here, put it on the stand, take that plastic off, and uh, take the side number plate off, and uh, take off my stock exhaust. As you can see right here, that's pretty bent in. So that'll come out just like that. Pipe drops, pull that right out. So basically, I know this isn't going to fit. I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. KTM exhaust is significantly longer. Probably about three inches, four inches longer. Um, and I don't think that pipe's gonna fit. So what I'm gonna do is probably cut this here, cut this here, and just do welding, whatever. All right, so yeah, that's not gonna work. All right, let's get to cutting then. Okay, so. This will fit, uh, I gotta, whatever. Um, basically I'm gonna cut up to there. I like drew a line with my hand, so I'm just gonna cut that off and uh, flip it and weld it to this however I can and this should sh should fit pretty damn good. I mean, it's not gonna sit like that, but I got the, I got the thing in. I'm just gonna have one in, just like I, on this one, I didn't have the top one on because it was bent, I, it wouldn't reach that, but um, yeah, shouldn't, shouldn't be too bad. I got this mocked up uh, pretty close to how it's going to be. So that is a KTM silencer on a YZ. Um, it's going to sit more like that because I want it to be even with that. But yeah, I don't know. It's going to be so, something along those lines. I'm going to have to cut this a little bit more, just start cutting slightly more off of it. But that. Uh, honestly, I think if I cut it at an angle right here, it'll perfectly just slide up and uh, fit. Okay, so that is uh, very, very close as to where I want it. I just really like the way the stock exhaust on KTMs look, even with the little strap thing. Um, as you can see, this is like super, super close, so I'm just going to cut in slight, slight angle right there. And I uh, can't wait for this freaking sound test because it's going to be drastic. <sighs> Alright, so I got that ground pretty damn good. I wish I could TIG weld so I could make it look like that, but that is just not going to happen. What I'm going to do here is uh, line it up exactly where I want it in the back. I'm over to the front. Line up this pipe as good as I can. I'm just going to tack weld it. Okay. Now, I take this off. Come out, pull the pipe out. Now you have a tack welded YZ250 KTM hybrid with barely a gap. I, I thought I was going to have more of a gap than that because I kind of did this blind, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, weld this all around and try not to make the welds very big. So I'll get to that. Right there. Look at that. Mint. Alright, well, I'm going to bolt this up, put the fender on, and uh, start this thing up. Well, it's still out. Next thing to do to this would be to repack it. All right, this takes a little bit of uh, flexing and finessing, but you can get it out. Now, that's pretty burnt, so no wonder why it wasn't uh, muffling it correctly. This is all the bullshit that's coming out of here. It's mad, cracked, and dookie, so I'm going to put some new fiberglass in there. You don't have to use real packing. You could just use, uh, like, house fiberglass and duct tape. There you go, completely empty, all this nasty shit on the ground. It's gonna get thrown away. Now, come over here, 
get you some fiberglass. I'm gonna put gloves on. What you wanna do is take the uh, inner part, like the whatever, the this, this side, not the outside side, and you're gonna wanna take either your packing or your regular insulation, and you're just gonna wrap this as tight as you can all the way around it, and you're gonna wrap it with the duct tape. And then you're gonna hopefully be able to get it into your silencer, bolt it back up, and uh, you're ready to go. So I'll time lapse that now. All right, I, I redid it. I, I put more in there and more tape. You guys, you guys get it though. Time lapse was good enough. Now to painstakingly insert this into that. Okay, well after like way longer, way, way, way longer than this should have taken, it's repacked and on the bike. before good so there that is KTM 300 XCWE exhaust repacked and customly welded to my YZ exhaust other pipe thing a lot quieter also I've said this before but my clutch is like insanely stiff um, I'm gonna check when I get that side cover off if the lever is it or whatever but the cable looks good so I bought this thing from eBay, it was $13, it's supposed to make it pull easier. I'll show you how to install it and how it works. So basically this is how this works. You have an adjuster here, you have your extra cable here, so your regular clutch cable comes up into this and that's what's right there. And then this cable, the short one, is going to go to your bar. But you do have to find uh, some extra space for the clutch cable because you're going to be extending it about 6 inches and then that pin right there where my thumb is you can move and uh, change your leverage. So I'm gonna try out all three and uh, see which one pulls the easiest. Okay, so the levers don't fit my bike, but they may fit Callie's. But I did have an extra lever, which wasn't bent and broken, and I slid the perch over it, and along with this, I got it all adjusted now, like the clutch. It's not like the super easiest thing, it's not a hydro clutch by any means, but it is like su like substantially easier than uh than it was before before it was like a super bitch to do this but this could also be if you have a shitty clutch basket like a notched up clutch basket they stick and it'll make the cable hard to pull or if the cable is not lubed enough that can also happen but my cable's fine and uh yeah so this thing right here definitely worth the 10 bucks because it did take a lot of the uh the the strength out of this Oh, well, would you look at that? Don't they look great? Beautiful. This side required some grinding, but uh, looks like Cal is going to have some nice breakaway, unbreakable, whatever the hell you call them, levers. Uh, kind of mimic the ASV levers. They're not as good as the sun lines because sun lines go up, down, and back and forth. All right, well, that, uh, that's it for that. A couple things I do want to explain. All right, so I'm going to need to buy a new, well, I'm just going to buy a whole new set of levers. This will do for now because it's longer and it's like not friggin' broken. At least I got to put the levers on today. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be doing carb tuning on both of these. We're going to be doing jetting on mine. I don't have her jet for hers. I got a flywheel weight for this that should be here tomorrow and I'll, I'll explain all that tomorrow's video. But my objective for today, success. Got a KTM exhaust, which I, I really like the look of. I like how it sticks out more. It's a lot quieter. I don't know how much you guys could tell on video. <laughs> but it just it's a clean look and I always liked like this plastic double strap look so 
I just think that's a that's a clean OEM plus, you know, it's a friggin KTM silencer, but these things are both super dirty and need to be washed. KTM exhaust repacked. Got this for 40 bucks. I think it was like 40 and I think it was like 50 shipped or 55 shipped. This bike has the new levers now. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you have. And if you guys like the dirt bike content, share it with the freaking friend. If you like whatever content, share it with whoever, you know. Oh, I got to slide that over. Like, comment, share, subscribe. I don't know. I'm not going to start screaming and running around like those, those other, the real YouTubers, you know. I'm not a real YouTuber. I'll see you guys next time. My bike looks freaking tight. Callie's is going to look freaking tight. Her levers look freaking tight. I can't wait to ride. He's out.